part fire tutorial series that I'd come back, I'd check out the comments, and I'd see what questions people had asked so that I could answer them and possibly help out that little bit more. First questions from that boy thinks. What's he think? What do you mean when you say one part red to ten part yellow or whatever it was? <laughs> Thanks for listening, mate. This is a paint mixing ratio. Whenever you're mixing paints, you generally refer to the quantities as a ratio. No, no, not Horatio from Shakespeare. A ratio. When I say one part red to ten parts yellow, it means to every one drop of red, you should be adding ten drops of yellow. If you're adding one gallon of red paint, then you're going to need ten gallons of yellow paint. Hopefully you're not mixing up that much. W666PER. W666PER. Number of a beast. When's part two? Yeah. Enjoy it. Kajza 04. So I can intermix Wicked and Auto Air and reduce with Wicked 4011? Do any problems appear when intermixing? Yes, absolutely. You can intermix Wicked and Auto Air together. In fact, I often do this myself and I have received advice from well informed parties that it's perfectly safe to do so. And by parties, I mean a large conglomeration of people all getting together and having a good time. No, of course. I mean a real person. Someone that actually sells Createx and said, yes, you can mix the two together. Samotta 92. Is it a lot harder to paint smoke than flames? It's kind of the same technique in smoke, right? To the first part of the question, no. It's definitely easier to paint smoke. Just use grey. To the second part of the question, yes. You do use a very similar technique, however you only require one colour layer and it's primarily made up of soft lines and blends only. Richie Fitzhenry, looking forward to giving it a go. Or 50. <laughs> Tell me about it mate. I actually started a little bit of an online journal um, at the Orange Airbrush Forum and you can actually see exactly what my results look like. Now I didn't post all of them up because some of them are just absolutely embarrassing. I just couldn't do it. But if you'd really like to see actually how long it did take me to learn how to do this freehand technique, then I'll include a little link in the description on YouTube to the Orange Airbrush Forum thread where I tried to document my journey a little bit and I've showed pictures and people gave advice. And the whole reason I started is because I wanted to show people that I did actually start from the start. I couldn't, I didn't just have a natural talent. I never have. I would guess that I did around 130 hours of practice all up. Anything I ever do is just from practice and just trying to learn. That's all you can do. In my opinion, everyone is in the same boat, okay? Bum vice gum chi. Which airbrush do you use? How big is the needle? I use a Badger Renegade Chrome most commonly because it's very comfortable in my hand and it's easy to airbrush with for extended periods of time and perfect for the detail in the flames. However, for the larger bottom layers, where I wanted to lay on a lot more paint fast, I used the Badger Patriot. In fact, you could do the entire freehand flame artwork with the Badger Patriot and get a very similar level of detail. You'd just need a little bit more patience. But it's nice to be able to use that Renegade Chrome and it's just so smooth and offers such fine detail, yet it's comfortable to hold. Strongly recommended. That's the end of the questions for now. Thanks so much for, uh, for following the Freehand Flames tutorial. I really hope you get something out of it. And uh, stay tuned to airbrushtutor.com because there's probably going to be a pro tutorial come up for Freehand Flames because there's just so much more that you can go into that you can't really access in the scope of YouTube tiny videos. Thank you so much for your support. Keep spreading the love. Look forward to seeing you guys again.